Hey out there! This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you another toy review. Now this is an, uh, a weird one because um, this isn't really my usual thing. Uh, have you ever like seen something that you like out there but you never really liked it enough to get it? Uh, then one day you see it in the clearance rack and it kind of hits you that it, that this thing if you don't get it, then it's going to disappear and you'll never have it again. And you have that epiphany where you just kind of realize, yeah, I need this in my life. Well, I sort of had that thing uh, a couple days ago. So that's why this review is going to be about this. It's the Star Trek Enterprise Battle Pod playset. <laughs> Okay, so the technical proper name for this toy is the USS Enterprise Attack Pod Launcher. And uh, it is a the cutest version of the USS Enterprise ever. Um, this is, of course, based on the, on the Enterprise as it appeared in the recent Star Trek movie. I believe from Into Darkness, though it might be a toy hailing all the way back from the first movie. I'm not quite sure, um, and uh, it has all the major details of the Enterprise on it. Like you got the you got the little bridge there. You have uh, you have the details. Like it says USS Enterprise N Double C Dash Seventeen O One. Well, you know we have all that cool stuff. Uh, we got we got a big blue deflector dish. Got a few. A few things picked out, the warp engines. Um, if you look real closely, you see that there's a little bit of blue lights picked out right there. You know, it's 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 a toy of the Enterprise. Uh, of course, it's not a scale model. Don't don't don't. If if you're looking for a scale model, this is not what you're going to be getting because uh, it's sort of really fat. Um, it's kind of like vertically exaggerated by about 400% or so. But you know, it still looks good. If um, if you want a version of the Enterprise for 11 bucks, um, because that's how much this thing costs now at Toys R Us, thanks to the green clearance, then uh, you should uh, totally be into it. Alright, so what does the thingy do? Well, uh, it opens up. Um, these are meant to hold the uh, the battle pods, which is part of the gimmick of the toy line. But in this case, I use them as storage for the included crew, which consists of these little squinkies type figurines. So let's get an up close and personal look at these little mini figures. So the Starship Enterprise comes with six of the most tiny and chibi tastic mini figures you'll ever see. Now, earlier I said that they were like squinkies, but that's not really true. These are a little bit stiffer than squinkies. Similar, but not quite the same. Um, they, are, they are almost exactly like the Star Wars Battle Pod figures. So, um, since they're both made by Hasbro, it's no surprise. Uh, but only the Star Trek ones are on clearance right now. I guess the Star Wars license was able to grasp customers a little bit longer. So, uh, let's uh, start on the left and zoom in a little. Uh, we got Captain Kirk, Uhura, Dr. McCoy, Sulu, Spock, and a random Klingon um, wearing the helmet from the second movie, so this is probably an Into Darkness toy. Um, yeah, they're all very basic, but still distinct. I kind of I kind of love the, the Spock's little eyebrows being so thick, even at this tiny scale. They they are just so adorable. I mean they're they're just they're just tiny and cute and awesome, and uh, they they make uh, nice little companion pieces to this thing. Um, all right, so uh, let's let's go back to the Enterprise and talk about what it's supposed to do. All right, so this is actually a gimmick toy. 
Um, not, not really something made for adult collectors in the first place. So that means it does do a thing. Uh, the last accessory, which I haven't touched upon yet, is the attack pod. Um, I guess if you squint and relax your vision and uh, close and then imagine better times and got drunk, you might imagine that it looks something like a shuttle pod or an escape pod or one of the torpedoes that Sung's people were preser preserved in. Uh, you know, like, not, not Sung's people, that's the guy that built Data. Uh, Khan's people. Sorry about that. Um, it might look like something that was in one of the movies, but uh, really, it doesn't really look like anything. Not really my favorite part of this thing. Um, and it's, it's where the, the toy is slightly compromised for its gimmick. Um, first thing is, you open up the deflector dish, which there's really no strong latch for that thing, so it can come popped open by accident a little bit too easily for my taste. And inside, you have space to put the pod in. So you simply insert the pod, justly. And um, that's where the other problem comes in. The pod doesn't go in all the way. So you can't store the pod and then close the door. The pod is going to be obtrusively just sticking out in the most annoying of manners. I really wish that the pod wasn't such an obtrusive part of the toy. Uh, although, the triggering mechanism is this button on the back, which is not very obvious. You know, it's not some big red push me thing. It's, it's just kind of blended naturally into the sculpt of the toy. That's cool, at least. So, basically, what you do is you push on the button on the back, and it launches the pod. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's get a little bit more space. All right, here I am on the floor of the bedroom. Uh, the instructions say to hold it roughly eight inches above the ground when you're using it for this purpose. So um, I'm gonna hopefully catch it, catch the action gimmick in the camera's field of view. This is just like when I launched my my Sonic Crash and Smash bike into the wall. So push the button. Yay! And as you can see, the thing separates down to a bunch of little pieces that can easily get lost. Okay, let's let's uh, pick this up. All right, so here's the pod's components. Um, you have the little cockpit. You can fit one of the minifigures in here. The door is spring loaded to autom to automatically open. Uh, then you have these two things. I can only guess that they're supposed to be like a, a blade of pieces that, that come off and I, I don't know why they aren't just part of the thing because they, they do not clip into place at all. They just kind of rest there and they're only held into place by the launcher. Which isn't good because they're so small and they come flying off. So this is something that's just going to get lost. And then comes this piece. It's what holds everything together. You push it in like that. Um, so. This is what latches into the pod and it grips, and then there's a trigger on the bottom. So when you push the button on the pod, it launches out, and then when it hits the ground, this switch gets depressed, and that's what launches the other half of the pod out. So it's, it's supposed to be like a two-stage rocket thing, but um, like I said, it's just parts that can easily get lost, and um, it doesn't really do anything for the toy. I mean. Uh, I guess this is fun if you like launching toy gimmicks, but it's really not like anything that was in the Star Trek show. I mean, when did the Enterprise launch a missile pod that was, that was like, that's like almost a third as big as the ship itself? I mean, this is as big as a, as a runabout. I mean, look at it compared to the saucer section. It's huge. This is way too big to be a missile or a shuttle or anything. I mean, a shuttle at this scale would be about the size of one of those little minifigures. And I just accidentally triggered it again. Um, okay, let's go back to talking about those minifigures. Alright, so 
a couple of the more observant in the audience might have noticed that there are some pegs on the Enterprise. Uh, there's two on the saucers, one on each nacelle, and one right here on the main fuselage. Uh, these pegs are sized to fit in the little holes at the bottom of the minifigures so that they can, you know, plug in. So you can have a Klingon warrior standing on one of the nacelles uh, thinking that he just might be able to take down the flagship of Starfleet with a sword. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I mean, I guess, I guess if you want to display it with your minifigures standing on it, that is kind of cool. Although it might offend most people's sense of scale. Although, you know, the Enterprise isn't this fat, so maybe you're not really caring about scale too much anyway if you bought this thing. Um, but the real story is here. The saucer section opens up to reveal the bridge of the Enterprise, exactly how the layout is supposed to be in the show. So you can actually put everyone at their proper duty station. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Like uh, Uhura would be over here at the communications, um, and then Captain Kirk would be here in the captain's chair. You would have Sulu sitting here as the helmsman. Um, let's see, Spock would be over here. I believe that's the security desk or something. And uh, this is Bones. Uh, Bones should be in sick bay, so he doesn't normally work on the bridge. But if he's here, there's four extra pegs going around this, going around the perimeter of the bridge that you can stand him on. And uh, I don't know, let, let's say that this guy's a visiting dignitary. Because uh, everyone on the bridge is armed with phasers and phase rifles. So I don't think he, that that Klingon's actually there to make any trouble. Uh, so yeah, you have your own little bridge crew. Of course, the observant may notice that you're kind of missing some. Well, that, my friends, are what the expansion packs are for. Yeah, this is the fighter pods attack pod ninja star uh, and it comes with more minifigures so let's there's the clearance price green clearance means is 50 percent off so i got this for about four bucks and change so uh let's let's pop this open and see what we got here all right so here is the ninja star thingy um, it's exactly the same as the blue paw that came with the Enterprise. It has a Federation logo. Um, they call it the Ninja Pod because it's supposed to launch like a shooting a Ninja Star. I call it the Trash Can Launcher because uh, when when I push the launch button, that happens. And um, I guess this is supposed to like the swing open. Like I guess you could say that that kind of looks like a Ninja Throwing Star, but come on. This is a garbage can. This thing launches a garbage can at you. Yeah. I did not buy this set for this for the launcher. The launcher is superfluous and dumb and rather undignified for a member of Starfleet to attack an enemy in. Like like fear me for I shall come at you in my flying garbage can. Which not even the Ninja Turtles would be undignified enough. No, no. The reason you buy the expansion kit is not for the stupid gimmick toy, it's for the minifigures that come inside. In this case, there are four of them. Uh, okay. So let's take a closer look at these four minifigures. Okay, so here are the four minifigures that came with that, uh, with that set. Uh, we have... We have Scotty, the trusty chief engineer. Um, we have everyone's favorite hilariously accented uh, Chekhov, who is uh, pointing. I don't know what he's pointing at. Um, we have a guy in a full space suit who um, the instructions, well, yeah, the instructions say that this is also Chekhov. So this is Chekhov in an alternate costume. And then we have some weird pigman looking guy who is only called Four Eyes because he has four eyeballs. 
I mean, come on. They they couldn't name this guy. I mean, we got on D Space Nine. They had a character that sat at the bar and never had a spoken line of dialogue. It, but he had a name. It was Morn, and they had an entire episode dedicated to him. Morning Morn. So they can name a guy who never has a line of dialogue in a show that lasts for like eight seasons or something, but this guy can't even get a nickname? Come on! Big face! Call, call him call him Mr. Piggington. Anything is better than four eyes! Ah. <laughs> okay. So, the Ninja Pod also came with this little checklist that shows off all the little minifigures you can get from uh, Lieutenant Sprog, the blue guy, to Four Eyes, who also apparently comes in an alternate costume, to, um, there's Chekhov in the armor, there's Dr. McCoy wearing his blue medical officer uniform. Remember, the Dr. McCoy that comes with this Enterprise is actually wearing a different suit. He's wearing the, he's wearing a gray suit, not the blue one. Let's see. They also have. Oops. They also have a uh, Ufura cask. That little guy Keenzer, uh, Gala, the Orionid woman in the pink underwear, who is actually made in the pink underwear. Um, Lieutenant Madeline, who um, I'm not sure if I, I called her. I called her C3PO by accident because she kind of looks like C3PO. Um, to Chief Longface here, uh, Lieutenant Brian, uh, a Gorn, in case you, you're into that kind of thing. And, uh, several Klingon variants, uh, Ayel and Nero, you know, the Romulans. Uh, there's little pointy Chekhov, uh, Gracia, Grazia, the, uh, you know, guy. Uh, Sulu with his sword. I kind of wish that my that the Enterprise set came with that guy because I th I like him with the sword better than the phaser rifle. Um, to alternate costumes of Uhura, you know, there there's quite a bit of variety. Of course, I was only interested in actually getting the main bridge crew so I could uh, you know set it up. So there is the there is the bridge of the little battle pod Enterprise. Um, I put Chekhov in his in his seat. Uh, he's in charge of the ship's uh, tactical, which is right next to the helmsman. Um, Doc Bones is supposed to be in sick bay, so I just put him off on the side. I put four eyes there. He's like looking at the at the view screen or whatever. And there's Scotty with his back turned to the Klingon, cause he's probably drunk. So yeah, um, I think it's a cute little display thing you can do. Only problem is with the little figures sitting in their proper stations, you can't close the lid anymore. So you gotta take the guys out of the thing in order to close the lid and have it look like the Enterprise. And you can have the little spacesuit guy standing on the nacelle because, you know, he's wearing the spacesuit so he's protected from the vacuum of space. Alright, so, um, if you want to pick up one of these um, Battle Pod Enterprises, you should do it quickly because they are marked green clearance at Toys R Us now. Uh, so you can actually get the Enterprise and the and the um, Battle Pod upgrade that has the rest of the bridge crew for a grand total of about 15 bucks, which is not bad at all for this little setup. Um, I mean, even if you wanted to try and collect all the minifigures that are still available, it would probably cost you less than 30. Um, but you gotta go fast because they're on clearance, and once they're all gone, they're gonna be gone, which is kind of why I picked it up when I could. So yeah, um, I don't know how many of you out there are Trekkies, but I sure am. And uh, I think that this is a really cool little thing. Um, you can completely ignore the fact that it's a launching gimmick toy and just have it as a little chibi, uh, super adorable enterprise. And that's perfectly fine. And you can even have it as a little diorama display of all the, of this, of the little minifigure crew. Which is really nice. I love this thing. Okay, so this has been Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, and I'm signing off.